Hello, this is free online resources for genealogists with Tessa Brawley Barker. This is part of the Tulsa City County Library Genealogy Resource Center Family History Month 2020. This presentation is intended for someone who's new to genealogy research, but it could also be helpful for more experienced researchers who might not know about some of these resources. And a handout will also be available with links to all the sites mentioned in this presentation. So the first site that I'm going to be talking about is FamilySearch.org. FamilySearch is affiliated with the Mormon Church. If you've done any genealogy research, you know that the Mormon Church has the largest genealogy library in the world in Salt Lake City, Utah. So they have a lot of resources at their fingertips and Family Search is a great resource. One thing to know about Family Search is that you do have to create an account to get access to their site, but it is a free account. You can search for people, records, and for family trees that have already been created by users within the Family Search website. One thing to note about family trees are that they are not always reliable. So family trees that are in Ancestry or in Family Search, um, unless they are well documented, take them with a grain of salt. They're good for getting some hints, finding some information on names maybe, um, but just don't treat them as authoritative unless they are very well documented. My favorite part of Family Search is actually not FamilySearch.org, but is the Family Search Research Wiki. This is part of Family Search, but you don't need an account to access the Research Wiki. So I'm going to click out to the Research Wiki to show you how it works. Basically, the Family Search Research Wiki is a Wikipedia of genealogy, genealogy research terms. And there's a ton of information here. As you can see, you can search it just like you search Wikipedia. There's a page on all these different subjects and they link out to um, different records or resources for more information on those areas. You can click on different countries if you want to specifically dive down by location that way. But I'm just gonna type something into the search box to see, to show you what it looks like. So I have some ancestors from Ireland, so I just typed in Ireland into the search box and you can see all these different pages that pop up on Ireland genealogy research. So I'm just gonna click on the census page just to give you an example of what the page looks like. As you can see, it looks a lot like Wikipedia. There's a basic definition at the top. There's a table of contents here that uh, are hyperlinked to the different sections. You can find census indexes. So this is all information on the Ireland census. So this is a lot of information. Um, there is a ton of stuff in, fam in the Family Search Research Wiki on all different countries, all different subjects. It's a really good resource. And to get back home, you just click on this Wiki Home on the left here and you get back to the home page. So, that's my favorite thing about Family Search. I'm going to move on to the next site here. Access Genealogy is another site that I'm newly familiar with. I'm not an expert in it, but I came across it and I think it has a lot of interesting um, resources. So I wanted to recommend it to other people who may not be familiar with it either. I believe that it's a crowdsourced site. And so it features a lot of free genealogy resources that are categorized by subject or state. This is a common theme among a lot of free genealogy resource sites. So it includes links out to other sites, but it has a small list of its own databases as well. One thing to caution you, because it's crowdsourced, the links might not always be up to date. So you always have to check on that with all of these resources that the links might not always be updated. Something to keep in mind. So I'm going to pop over to Access Genealogy just to show you around a little bit. 
So as you can see, these are their big subject areas that they focus in. They have a lot of information on Native American genealogy and research. So if you have any Native American ancestors that you're researching, this might be a good place to take a look. I like their cemetery records page. I'm gonna click on that. And be forewarned, there are these pop-up ads. Just scroll on down and ignore those. So here's their cemetery records page. They explain what cemetery records are, and if you keep scrolling down and ignore the ads, you get to this list of cemetery records by state. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Oklahoma Cemetery Records page. So, and keep scrolling down and look at that. They have it organized by county. So I'm from Payne County, so I'm gonna take a look at the Payne County Cemetery Records page. And they have this very lovely picture of a Payne County Cemetery. And then they have cemetery records organized by cemetery and by surname of people buried in the cemeteries. So this is a, this is a really useful resource. Um, I wouldn't say that this is a comprehensive list of everyone buried in every cemetery in Payne County. However, this is what is available for free online that they have crowdsourced and put together here for you. So it's probably not comprehensive, but it can point you to a starting point. The next genealogy site that I want to take a look at is called RootsWeb. RootsWeb is under the umbrella branch of Ancestry.com. However, it is a free site, unlike Ancestry. The two main areas that I want to focus on for RootsWeb, number one is the message boards. Uh, this is a very popular feature of RootsWeb. You can post a question to a message board and genealogists check these message board, boards. Other people who are doing their research check these message boards and can try to respond to your question. So it's a good way to try to connect to other family members or people doing the same research as you, or maybe if you just hit a brick wall in your research and wanna post a question to um, get a crowdsourced answer from other genealogists, that's a great place to post it. Now, the other big feature of RootsWeb is their World Connect database, where you can search hundreds of shared family trees that people have uploaded. And you can also upload your own family tree by creating an account. Now, I'm gonna show you how to search the family trees in World Connect. So, this is RootsWeb, and again, the search database for family trees is called World Connect and it's this big bo box right in the middle of the page and you click on this green begin searching button. Now you can search by tree ID or GEDCOM name. The GEDCOM name is the file type of the tree of a family tree if you download it from a genealogy database where you've created a family tree. However, if you don't know things like that, I find that the easiest way to search World Connect is to simply skip all this, go up to the top here where it says search for people by name, the old fashioned way. So this is what I like to do. You can put the first name, last name, if there's phonetic, uh, gender, birth year, birth place, death year, you don't have to search for all those things. You can just try putting in the name and just hitting the search bar. So. That's my favorite way to use World Connect. I have found some information, um, some of my ancestors that were on other people's family trees in World Connect. And again, I took all that information with a grain of salt because it's other people's family trees. I don't know how well they've been researched. However, it helped point me to more information to some names that I could then research myself to prove if these people were actually related. So World Connect, is very useful that way, and that's on the RootsWeb website. The next genealogy website that I wanted to talk about is US Gen Web. This is one of the big 
free genealogy websites online. As is implied by the title, this is specific to United States research. When you go to the home page where I have a, a picture of here, you'll immediately see a map of the US and you can click on each state. Each state has a page dedicated to it and that's further broken down by county. So on the county pages, you can find certain county records, photographs, maps, and other information that they've been able to source for free. And they also provide some information on where to go uh, for records that aren't for free, but you might need to purchase from the county directly or the state. They also have lots of research tips on various genealogy topics. I find their research tips really helpful. That's at the top of the page in this red search banner. There's a little button that says research. Lots of search tips there that are very helpful for people who are beginning genealogy research, so I recommend looking there as well. The next site I'm gonna talk about is Cindy's List. Cindy's List is another one of the big free genealogy websites that a lot of people know about. Cindy's list is what the title implies. It's a categorized list of links to genealogy sites and resources. It can be a bit overwhelming to search. So I'm gonna show you the way that I search Cindy's list. That makes it most easy for me. So I'm going to pop over here and to get to all the categories, what you wanna do first is Click on this categories button on the left and then it brings you up a list of all the genealogy categories which is alphabetical. Now you can go letter by letter if you know what you're searching for or you can just use my little trick which is hit control F to uh, find something on the page. And let's say that I'm looking for vital records. I want to type in the word vital into that search box right there and it pops me down to their US vital records page. So I'm going to click on this and see what we have here. So now it has it indexed by state. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to Oklahoma and click on the Oklahoma page. As you can see, they have it organized uh, based on well, it's alphabetically listed, but at the ends, you can see what is what you have to pay, records you have to pay for, and which records are free. So at archives.com, you can search for Oklahoma Vital Records uh, at cost. However, on Family Search, they have Oklahoma County marriages from 1891 to 1959 <laughs> records from that year for free. So you can go back to Family Search and look for those records there. So this is a good way um, to just see what records are where <laughs> across all sites online. I'm sure not everything is here, but they do a pretty good job and can point you uh, in the right direction in your research. So that's the The way Cindy's list can be very helpful to your research. So now I'm going to broaden the scope of this presentation outside of genealogy specific websites. Now I'm going to move into library and archives websites as well that can help you with your genealogy research. The first one I'm going to look at is the National Archives and Records Administration or NARA. So NARA is the National Archives of the United States federal government. So as you can imagine, there are hundreds of thousands of records that NARA has in its collections. A lot of the records that NARA has, you either have to go there in person to see, or you have to submit a request to have a copy made for you, and you will have to pay a fee to get those copies. However, they do have a lot of digital collections on their website, and I encourage you to explore those. 
But what I want to focus on today is their resources for genealogists page. This is a really useful page that I like. As you can see, they have a section on starting your family research, how to get started, popular topics in genealogy research, <clears throat> and tools for genealogists, which I specifically like for this charts and forms list link. As you can see, they have free ancestral charts, family group sheets, uh, traditional genealogy trees that you can download for free as PDFs. That's really helpful. And they also have these charts and forms for federal census forms. So if you're looking at a federal census record and you don't want to have to keep scrolling up the page just to remember what that column, what the question was in that column, it's good to have a copy of the actual census form to see what those questions were. The other thing I wanted to focus on on NARA's website that is linked to from this same resources for genealogists page, if you scroll down a little bit, they have a link to the database where you can search for the entire 1940 census. Now this is a partnership between the National Archives and archives.com that allows you to search the entire 1940 census for free. It's really useful um, because otherwise, the only other way to, to search the uh, other census years is to go to the National Archives or to have a subscription to Ancestry.com, either personally or through a library. So if you want to look at census records on your own at home for free, the 1940 census is here and available for you from the National Archives. So that was something I want to point out to people. It's a really useful tool, really available there. The next site that I'm going to take a look at is the Library of Congress, specifically their digital collections. So the Library of Congress is sort of the counterpart to the National Archives. This is the uh, Library of the United States, and they have tons of books, of course, in their collection, physical books, but they also have a lot of archival materials and records similar to the National Archives. A lot of their archival collections have been digitized and they have all these great digital collections that you can search on their website. As you can see from the screenshot I have here, you can refine your search by subject to look through their digital collections, and they have these featured collections that they highlight at the top of the page. They have a lot of maps, uh, building plans, all kinds of things they have in here for you to browse. It's a really rich collection, but what I want to focus on that we use a lot in libraries is their Chronicling America collection. So I'm going to click over and show you this website. So Chronicling America is America's historic newspaper collection between the years 1789 to 1963. Once you get past 1963, um, newspapers fall under copyright so you'll either have to pay to get an article from a website like newspapers.com or you'll have to go to a library and use a database to look up those records. However, Chronicling America has made an effort to digitize the historic newspapers that no longer fall under copyright between that date range that I mentioned. Now, the easiest way for, that I have found to search Chronicling America is to click on this All dig Digitized Newspapers link right here, and then refine your search by state. So now we're going to take a look at all of the digitized newspapers they have for the state of Oklahoma. And as you can see, they have 27 different newspapers from Oklahoma that are available for viewing on this site. 
Now, is this all the newspapers that were printed in Oklahoma between those that date range? Possibly not, but it's a lot of them. So this is very helpful. They have a link for you to browse the issues, the number of issues they have, the earliest and the latest, and more information. And now if we go back, you can see that you can further limit it by ethnicity. So let's say that we want to see all the African American newspapers in the state of Oklahoma. They have those available as well. Number of issues, earliest issue, latest issue, and then you can browse them. So Chronicling America is a really good resource if you're looking for old obituaries, for instance, or death notices that might have appeared between these years. Check here to see if you can find them online. Next, I'm going to focus on two different resources for free ebooks. So, in your genealogy research, at some point you will have to look at a book to get some documentation. Not everything is online, and not everything is, not all records are available online. You sometimes have to go to an old-fashioned book. However, if you want to see if that book has been digitized, you know, if it's an older book that is possibly in the public domain and could be available for free online, you can check for um, those titles in both of these resources. The first one that I'm going to take a look at is the Internet Archive. So the Internet Archive is a huge website of a ton of digital content. As you can see what, from what they say right here, they have millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more. There's a ton of stuff in the Internet Archive, but it is a very authoritative source. Lots of esteemed institutions digitize their collections and put them in the Internet Archive. They share these collections with the Internet Archive, such as the Library of Congress, uh, the Getty Museum, and the Smithsonian Libraries all put their digital content in the Internet Archive. So there's a lot of great information in here for you to discover. Now, there was a book that I was researching as part of my genealogy research, a book that relates to a location where my family lived, and I'm going to demonstrate the search for you. It's the History of Monroe in Shelby Counties, Missouri. I just type that into the general search box at the Internet Archive here, and I'm going to click on Go and see what my results are. And as you can see, I got a hit. So here's my result. There is a digital book, a digital version of this book, and it was digitized when I hover over it by the Library of Congress. So the Library of Congress scanned their copy of this book and uploaded it to the Internet Archive. And if I click on the record, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the digital copy of the book that has some information on some of my family members my ancestors anyway. If you click through, you can read the book like this if you prefer to read it the old-fashioned way as if it were really a book in front of you. Or you can scroll down, which is my favorite thing to do, and download it using one of these many download options. This is the thing I love about Internet Archive is that they have all these different download options and so many. It can be a little overwhelming, but my personal favorite is always to download something as a PDF. However, you can also download it as a black and white PDF if you want to make the file size smaller, because of course, if it's in black and white, it won't use as much space. So that might be a better choice for you. You can also download it as an EPUB, which is for an e-reading device, or you can download it as a Kindle if you have a Kindle specifically. So there's lots of ways you can download this item to read it and save it to your device. So that's an example of the Internet Archive. Now I'm going to pop over to Google Books. Google Books is a little bit more narrow in its focus than Internet Archive. It's just digitized books. 
So I'm going to look for the same book in Google Books and see what my hits are. I typed it in and hit enter. Now this first result for my hits does not look that good to me. As you can see, it says it has no preview and it doesn't look like there's a way for me to read it. So I'm going to go down to the second hit result and it has a read option and the publication date looks better for me and it has a preview of what it looks like. So I think this is a better result. So I'm going to click on this one and what it does is it pops up the content for you and it highlights the words that you searched for. So if you want to get rid of all that highlighting because it's going to highlight every <laughs> iteration of of and and. So I'm going to clear this search and you can just scroll through and read it this way on your computer or you can close out of this here and see the information on the item and they have their own download PDF button. So this would be my preferred method is to just download it as a PDF and then I can save it to my computer or a thumb drive and I can read it later uh, and just have it with me. So that is an example of how Google Books search results work. The next site that I want to talk about is WorldCat. Now WorldCat is well known in the library world, but maybe not to uh, researchers as much. However, it's a great resource for locating books and articles across libraries in the United States and beyond. Now their name says that it's a world catalog, but it doesn't search every library in the world, but it does search a lot of libraries in the world. Um, it's it's a pretty good resource and almost every library in the US will be searched across WorldCat. So I'm going to give you uh, an example of how to search WorldCat. Let's say that I'm searching for the same book, but I want to find a physical copy of this book. Let's say that for some reason, I want to look at this book as a physical book and not as an ebook. So I'm going to type, type it again into my search bar, hit the search everything, and here are my results. So let's say that I want to <clears throat> narrow this down by, uh, by print book versus ebook. So I'm going to go to these filters on the left and click on print book. Now there's a little check next to print book and now it has it organized by print versions of this book. Now these are just different records of the same item but this first record looks pretty good because it's very long. It um, looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on it and scroll down the page this looks like my book. And now based on my location, based on my zip code, you can change the zip code um, depending on where you are. If you want to type something else in here, you can. But based on my current location in Tulsa, the nearest library that has a physical copy of this book is at the University of Missouri in Kansas City. And the next nearest is the Dallas Public Library. So if I want to go find a physical copy of this book, I can go to that library and look at it in person. Now, let's go back to our search results. I hit the back page. And let's say that I just want to look for ebooks. So I've unchecked print book and I just want to see the ebook versions of this book if there are any. So because there were three, as it said here, I'm going to click on this first result and see what I get. Now again, this is the same book and it's scrolled down and now it says find a copy online. Here's a link to this item in the Internet Archive and if I click it takes us right back to the Internet Archive where we saw that book when we searched the Internet Archive directly. So it might be smart to when you're searching for a book to look in WorldCat first 
and see if it links out to Internet Archive or Google Books if you want to find an ebook version of it. However, not everything's in WorldCat, so if you can't find it there, it's worth going back to Internet Archive and Google Books and searching there too, just to see. But WorldCat has a lot of information on library books. The next and the last site that I'm going to talk about is ArchiveGrid. I feel like ArchiveGrid is not as well known as WorldCat. It's sort of the counterpart to WorldCat, whereas WorldCat is for libraries, ArchiveGrid is for archives and special collections. So it searches across participating libraries and special collections, and it's a resource for finding archival collections such as personal papers and ephemeral materials. So let's say that you have an ancestor who is famous in some regard and their personal papers might have been collected by an academic institution or a historical society. You can search an archive grid and see if you can find a link to that collection. So I'm going to show you an example of a search. And I also wanted to point out, please note that the URL, the the website for ArchiveGrid is not archivegrid.org or .com, it's this very long researchworks.oclc.org backslash archivegrid. So just keep that in mind. <coughs> so now I'm going to give you an example of a search in ArchiveGrid. I'm going to search for an artist who I admire, who was a turn of the century sculptor. Uh, one of her sculptures is actually in the Philbrook Museum in Tulsa. Her name is Harriet Whitney Frischmuth, and I'm going to search and see if I can find information on her in Archive Grid. So I get a variety of results. This first result is an electronic resource crest of the wave that sounds like the title of a sculpture and when I click on it I can see if this is a sculpture and there are links to images of this sculpture if I want to see that and if I go back and keep going down my search results there's an artist file on her at the Amon Carter Museum there's an artist file at the National Museum of Women in the Arts and here are her papers and they're at Syracuse University Special Collections Research Center so if I click on this link, what happens is it pops me over to the finding aid for the collection at Syracuse University. Sometimes the search results in Archive Grid won't take you directly to the finding aid. Sometimes they'll just take you to the website for the institution and then you have to click on a second button to get to the finding aid, but usually it takes you to the finding aid, which is really helpful. So this tells, a finding aid is what tells you, um, tells you what is in the collection. So as you can see, um, it includes the papers of the sculptor, including original artwork and reproductions, correspondence, memorabilia, as well as some family history about her and her companion. And then it has her biographical information, the scope of the collection, the contents, the arrangement, all kinds of information. And then there's also a button over here that allows me to request a visit to see this collection. Now that's something to note about archives and special collections and historical societies. Oftentimes you have to go in person to look at these collections if you want to look through everything yourself. If there's something specific that you want to find out from this collection, you can submit a research question. You can either call or email the institution. And they'll often make copies of correspondence or other uh, records or files for a fee. So it varies by institution and ArchiveGrid is a great way to search across a lot of institutions to find what you're looking for. So that was the last site that I wanted to focus on specifically, but if you're interested in more resources, I highly recommend Family Tree Magazine's article online called Best Free Genealogy and Family History Websites by David A. Brixel. 
Um, I found a lot of the sites that I talked about in this presentation uh, through that article. And the article goes way more in depth than I was able to cover here. It even has best free online genealogy resources by ethnicity. So for instance, if you are looking specifically into Dutch genealogy, there is a free online website for that that he links to. So I recommend uh, going to that article. I also want to suggest that you look at our Genealogy Center website. We have a link on our page to local resources and free websites that our staff have put together. And there's a lot more in there that I did not cover here. So please explore that as well. And that ends my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our address is on the page. You can come in and visit us. You can call us on the phone or send us an email. We'd be happy to help. Thank you.